Hi everybody, Dave Yellowbeck with Homes Built Right. You're remodeling a house, maybe you're building a new one. Have you ever thought about the smoke detectors that go into that house? Well, the code book's got a lot to say about these little safety devices, and we're going to talk about it in this upcoming video. Stay tuned. Hi everybody, welcome back. Dave Yelovic here with you, and today we're going to talk about smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. That's what the code book calls them, calls them alarms. Uh, you might call them smoke detectors, and I might use that term every now and then, but this is what we're going to be talking about. But if you're building a new house, or maybe you're in an existing house, you're remodeling, or maybe you're wondering, you're just looking up at your ceiling and say, hey, I don't have any. Do I need them? We're going to cover all the rules that the code book has to say. Now, now, floating around the internet, this is kind of funny. This is, I took this off the internet. Hey, full disclosure, I just think it's really funny because the, the meme says, you know, I think they meant the date. And if you read here, it says installed on, and it says the ceiling. I mean, um, but did you know that most manufacturers recommend that you replace these every 10 years? Uh, that's why you have a sticker here that says installed on, and you're supposed to put the installation date so you can count back 10 years. But hey, it's just a quick funny way to start the video, but it's a safety device. Again, no laughing matter. These things save lives. Um, they're not working, they're working improperly, they're old, they're 20 years old, they need to be replaced. But we're gonna talk about the rules from the International Residential Code, which are basically governed by the National Fire Protection Association's Standard 72. But I'm gonna talk about the International Residential Code. You can find this Section R314, smoke alarms is like say what they call them. And it says, hey, you should do it according to this section. And it talks about they shall be installed where. And if you've been in the construction business, you know this. It's been in the book forever. It says in sleeping room. You're supposed to have a smoke detector in all the sleeping rooms. But then it says, again, this has been there a while, outside separate sleeping rooms in the immediate vicinity of the bedrooms. And again, that's kind of been there. So you got one inside the bedroom. you got one outside the bedroom. We're, we're, we're starting pretty good here. So we got your basic layout, and this comes from the illustrated version of the code books, and they're just giving us clues. Hey, this is what a sample layout would be. So you've got them in the bedrooms, and then here or there. Where along here? It doesn't say. In the immediate vicinity of the bedrooms is what it says. So you be the judge of that, although I'm going to show you something here in a little while. Keep that in mind. But then they have some more words. On each additional story, so if you have Two, you know, you're on a slab with two stories. You're going to have one upstairs at least. If you have one in the basement, that's another story down there. But this gets into the, the rules for that. And then quickly as we go through this, you can see again, upstairs, downstairs, bedrooms, hallways, you're going to have a lot of these things. Now, they do get into some particulars in the code book. Some, but not all of them, as you're going to learn in this video. By the time you're done with this video, you'll probably know more than the average inspector because we're going to look at things that, again, what the code book says and then what the manufacturers say about installing their devices, which basically comes from that NFPA 72, by the way. So, smoke alarm shall be installed not less than, what, three feet horizontally from a door or opening of a bathroom that contains a bathtub or shower, unless this would prevent the placement of the smoke alarm required by this section. So there, you take hot steamy showers, steam looks like smoke to some smoke detectors, and it could set them off. You don't want that, so they say, hey, not within three feet of that bathroom door. That makes sense. So as we look into a little deeper, you know, some of you, most of my references come from the 2018 IRC. The 2021 IRC is out on the market. And if your jurisdiction is under that, I've included a few things from that one as well, including number five. One through four have always been in the code for, you know, a long time. But number five here is kind of new. I don't want your heads to explode, but this is the exact wording of what comes from the book. But the word hallway shows up a lot. So just bear with me and then I'll show you kind of a graphic from the illustrated version that explains this. In the hallway, this is where a smoke detector should go. In the hallway and in the room open to the hallway, in dwelling units, where the ceiling height of a room open to the hallway serving bedrooms exceeds that of the hallway by 24 inches or more. 
What does that mean? <laughs> well, here's a neat little graphic that they give us. Again, this is from an illustrated version, but it's basically, you know, we've always had in the bedroom, you've got one in the ceiling in the bedroom, and if you've got a hallway, you're going to have one outside, in, you know, in the bedroom. So we've, you've got two that we've normally had. But then, if we've got a ceiling that goes up more than 24 inches, you're going to have one there as well. That could be a cathedral ceiling. This hallway could just be a little tiny hallway, and you would need one in the bedroom, in the tiny hallway, and then up in this big tall ceiling. This could be a long hallway. Again, it doesn't say how long that hallway is. It just says in the hallway, serving that bedroom. And then if we come in here again, it could be a tray ceiling, two feet or more. It could be a cathedral ceiling, slope ceiling, all sorts of different ceilings. But if it's, it's way up there, because again, smoke goes to the highest point and they're thinking, hey, we want to put a smoke detector up there. It kind of makes sense if you think about it. If you walk through these spaces and you'll go, should not a smoke detector up there? This kind of covers that. So think about that if you're under the 2021. We'll go from there. Now a brief word about types of smoke detectors. Um, the code book gets into this term and you need to at least be familiar with it. It's called ionization, okay? An ionization type smoke alarm needs to and says smoke alarms are generally responsible for flaming fires and it goes into I just put a graphic that I got from one of the safety councils and it's just saying that this uses a radioactive material small little thing that if something comes across that's what sets it off just remember ionization is a type of smoke alarm or smoke detector and then there's a photoelectric smoke alarm and that's just basically got a light up in the thing and a smoke comes across it, the light gets diffracted and the alarm goes off. So we've got ionization and photoelectric. And that comes up in the code because they'll say ionization in a, you know, you'll see here in a second. Bear with me. So installation near cooking appliances. This is where this difference makes a difference. Smoke alarm should not be installed in the following locations unless this would prevent the placements, but there it is. Number one, number one says ionization smoke alarm shall not be less than 20 feet from the permanently installed cooking appliance. So from your range or your oven, it says shall not be less than 20 feet. So that's a long way away. But what kind of smoke alarm do you have? You've got to kind of look at the box and see what it says. Um, so that's one thing to keep note because the difference is and number two, it says, hey, ionization smoke alarms with self-silencing things can be what? They can be up to, they could be 10 feet, within 10 feet of that stove or oven. So, but then photoelectric creeps in here in number three. Photoelectric, remember that other type of smoke detector, uh, can be what? They can be up to six feet from the, from the Ranger oven. So again, depending on the situation, the layout, the plan, who knows, uh, maybe you have a bedroom right next to a kitchen and you have to have a smoke detector outside that bedroom. So what kind can you put out there? Probably a photoelectric because it can be a lot closer to those cooking appliances. Ionization has to be further away. Simple rules. Just think about that. Again, usually on a, a new construction. Now in 2021, we'll pull the curtain back on that one again. I got one other thing in here. Now it does introduce this thing. You can use stuff if it if it says on it that this thing helps reduce cooking nuisance alarms, then you can use that type of smoke alarm within six feet of the permanently, in, you know, stove or oven. Uh, pretty simple, but I have yet to see one of those yet on the market. I'm sure they're out there. I just haven't seen them. Alrighty, this has always been in the book. Interconnection. We always say all the smoke alarms in the new house are interconnected, meaning when one goes off, they all go off. So that's good. If you're away the other side of the house, got a fire out there, they all go off at the same time. That kind of makes sense when you're looking at the code. And then it says combination alarms, combination smoke alarms and carbon monoxides shall be permitted in use of just smoke alarms. Now you'll see here when we get going that you have to have at least one carbon monoxide detector, maybe, in a house. And if that happens, you know, where does it go? And this and that, we'll see that in a second. But they're saying, hey, you know, prices are coming down, this and that. You could have a house filled with 
combination smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Remember, code is the minimum standard. You can go above code and make everything combination smoke and carbon monoxide and go from there. So this is the minimum standard, but these are allowed. That's kind of cool. So when we look at the power source, and again, we've always, we know this, if you're a builder or inspector, you know that it's going to be usually in a new construction. It's wired into the house into the electrical system. If the electrical system goes down, you can see it in here, battery backup is required. And that's pretty pretty straightforward, and they're all been like that for a while. So it's, it's hardwired with a battery backup. And there is an exception, if you read into this, uh, smoke alarms for when buildings without commercial power. So without commercial power, well, lately, I don't know what that means. If you are off the grid and have all solar, does that mean you need these? I don't know. But maybe the wording needs to be changed now that uh, so many houses are solar powered and off the grid. Uh, there is a second one here. According, uh, if you have other types of things, if you're remodeling, let's say, and none of them are interconnected, you can use all battery stuff. There, there are certain things. Check with your local building official if you're remodeling to see what type of smoke alarm system you're going to have to do. Some jurisdictions will say, hey, you're remodeling, you got to update the whole thing. They all got to be interwired. They all got to be this way and go from there. So don't take what I say as gospel when you're remodeling because anything goes in your local jurisdiction. Check with them. All right, as we move forward, Fire alarm systems on some of our higher up, uh, upper end homes, you may have a fire alarm system. Those are the ones with the panels that directly go to the fire department, this or that, kind of like a commercial type of operation. You can have those that, that take care of these requirements that they have. In section 315, we're going to go a step further. Carbon monoxide alarms, carbon monoxide detectors. And it says, hey, just some of the rules are exactly like smoke detectors but we're just going to briefly go over them. So, hey, 315 is the rule we go by. And guess what? CO detectors. It's not CO2. A lot of guys, when we're talking, they'll say, hey, my CO2 detectors. I said, you got a what? CO2 detector, that's a different type of, no. CO is carbon monoxide, okay? So only one O oxide. So carbon monoxide detectors are required in homes. Where? Here, we'll get into the explanation. It's kind of, kind of straightforward. Uh, for new construction, carbon monoxide alarms shall be provided in dwelling units where either or both of these rules apply. This one, where the dwelling, the house, has a fuel-fired appliance. You've got a gas range, you've got a gas furnace, a gas water heater. Those are fuel-fired appliances. If those are inside the house, then you shall have carbon monoxide alarms. Pretty straightforward in that respect. So as we look at the second one, now this one is good, this, and if <clears throat> the dwelling unit has an attached garage and you have a door that communicates with the house, you got the, you know, the door that goes into the attached garage, that kind of thing. You might have an all electric house. Hey, I don't need a carbon monoxide detector, but you have an attached garage. Well, guess what? You need a carbon monoxide detector inside that house, but it's in there. If you got a garage attached, you're going to have a carbon monoxide detector somewhere in the house. Now, two things to note. They go into carbon monoxide. Dwellings shall be installed outside of each separate sleeping area. So if you have master on that side of the house and you've got all the kids' rooms on this side of the house, that's two separate areas, you'll have two carbon monoxide detectors out in the hall. I would recommend that you have a combination, smoke and carbon monoxide, out in the hall, outside those bedrooms, and that limits the number of things you have up on the ceiling, but that's how it works. So installed outside each separate sleeping area. You're not required to have them in the sleeping area like you are a smoke detector, but carbon monoxides are out in the hall. Now, if, if, now again, some upper end homes, you might have this. It does have a little caveat. Where a fuel burning appliance is located within a bedroom or it's attached bathroom, a carbon monoxide shall be installed inside that bedroom. What's that? Who puts a water heater in there? No, they don't do that. But I've seen many homes that have a gas fireplace in their master bedroom. I've seen gas heaters in bathrooms, uh, things like that. So if that is the case in your home, or your, your project, 
you would have a carbon monoxide detector within that bedroom if this applies to your project.